welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I am your host, Stan Rattan, and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show. Blue Collar's back for this episode. This is the Blue Collar Wine Show where I help you spend your wine dollars wisely. We're going through an interesting uh, new project by Francis Ford Coppola. It's called Virginia Dare Wines. Virginia Dare was uh, evidently the first name of the first child born, the first Anglo child born in North America. So uh, Coppola has been very interested in this character for a long time. They have a really cool jingle. If you go to their website uh, for Virginia Dare Wines, you'll see the little cool jingle that they did. They were established in 1835. Very old winery from the United States, pre-prohibition. And uh, uh, Coppola found some land, uh, the old Geyser Peak Winery in Geyserville, bought it, turned it into Virginia Dare Wines in honor of this old winery, Virginia Dare Wines. Uh, the winemaker is Sandy Walline. Uh, she went to UC Davis. She's worked at uh, the Robert Mondavi Winery. She's worked at Behringer, Simi, Spring Mountain, Kane. Um, she interned at uh, Domaine Chandon. So she's been around. She knows what she's doing. She's worked in a couple of boutique wineries. Uh, so she has a real good grasp of winemaking. Of course, she's working for a very uh, solid winery, Francis Ford Coppola. This is a division of that winery in California. Uh, so we're going to get started off right away. This is the uh, uh, American Wines Virginia Dare American Chardonnay. I'm just reading right off the label here. 2014. It's Russian River Valley Fruit, Sonoma County. I like this. Serve cold. Now you see that? I, the reason I noticed that is because I always say on, the state, on this channel, I try to drink it the way most of my consumers will drink it. That way you get a solid review of what you will experience. I know there's uh, some critics in the past on YouTube who have said they'd like to drink all their whites at room temperature. Well, that's great, but sorry, most consumers do not drink their wines at room temperature. So they're whites at room temperature. Certainly the reds they do. So I try to drink it the way you will drink it. You will drink it. Yule. Yule tide. <coughs> So, here we go. Chardonnay 2014, Russian River Valley Fruit. Great source for Chardonnay. I'll give you a little close-up of this. This rolls in at 25 U.S. dollars. Anywhere from 25 to 29 dollars. Let me back up just a little there. There we go. All right. Let's see what we get on the nose. I'm very curious about this wine. Ah, definitely California Chardonnay on the nose. I get that kind of pot, buttered popcorn, baking spice. A lot of pears coming through. Now, for you guys that love California shard, you know those kind of buttery, oaky shards. On the nose, this is exactly what I would expect for those type of wine drinks. A little bit of color, nice color on that, a little bit of golden color. Let's see what we get on the palate. on the palate, although right at the back end that oak really kind of hits, but it's but it's in balance, don't get me wrong. This is a very light Chardonnay. Kind of surprised on the nose, I thought it would be a little bit heavier. Um, I get a feeling that uh, Sandy is trying to attain a more Burgundian style on the palate. You know, that kind of light on its feet, but good flavor. That's what I'm getting. And then right at the back side, the oak kind of takes over. But it's all very well uh, structured. Give it another whirl here. So I get really light, almost like Asian pear notes. There's butter underneath, definitely a buttery component, a little bit of butterscotch. But this dances lightly on the palate. I mean, I get um, a little bit of minerality too, which is interesting. Not a lot. You have to think about it. But there's a little bit of like a wet stone element coming through. A 
A little bit of lemon, just a touch, just a touch. This is a nice Chardonnay because this would a really, um, it is a, what I call a crossover Chardonnay. What I'm trying to say is people that like oaky shards would probably like this, even though it's a little bit lighter on its feet. People who don't like too much oak would probably like it because it is light on its feet. It does have a very Burgundian style to it, which I find quite intriguing. And that little oak kick on the back is just enough for those who really want some oak in there, a little bit of wood in their Chardonnay. This has it. I'm just really digging the balance on this wine. Uh, it is 25 bones. I know that's a, can be, that's not a cheap Chardonnay. Trust me, I don't think that's a cheap Chardonnay. But I think you're getting a little bit of burgundy, white burgundy action on this one. I think for those of you who really do like white burgundies, and maybe you want a little bit of an American kiss to it, this is the one. And I think it, it, it really strikes that nice balance. Um, the price point, a little not cheap, but not expensive compared to white burgundy. Remember now, if you're going all white burgundy, I mean, now I have do have, I'm, I honestly I have some good white burgundies that are a lot less money than this, but I mean, in general, white burgundies are probably twice as much as this wine. I'm gonna go, Now I'm starting to really get that butterscotch. Now this one is cool. It's not cold. Some of you might drink your Chardonnay a little bit cold in this. I try to get in between a little bit so I can get as much flavor out as possible. I like this Chardonnay. I think it's really good. I'm going to go B plus, heads towards A minus. I think it, it's a nice Chard. It, you could you could have this. This would be great with like a Cornish game hen. Be great with like a mushroom soup. Be great with any pasta with cream sauce. I would dare say that you could probably even do this with like mussels or clams. Um, it, it is light enough on its feet to do that, but it has a, a really good flavor profile, that butterscotch, butter, pear thing going on with a little bit of lemon on the back side, then a little bit of oak, but that oak will not conflict too much with the shellfish. I like that. Nice start. Let's move on. Now this is the same price as a Chardonnay, anywhere between $25 and $29. Uh, this is the 2015 American Wines Virginia Dare Pinot Noir Russian River Valley Sonoma County. Get my hand out of the way. There you go. Pretty cool label. Let me rinse here. I thought it was funny. I went to Pinot Camp. Uh, it's sort of a program they have for people in the trade. Uh, they invite you down, you, they give you a tour of uh, Willamette Valley, and I, I was just really, really a little bit put off by their attitude towards California wines, um, since many of them came from California. In fact, a lot of them came from California. Now, I know, I do agree that Willamette Valley is probably one of the best places in the world for Pinot Noir, next to Burgundy, of course. In fact, there's a lot of Oregon Pinots that I like better than Burgundy. But if you came from California, that's where you learned how to make wine, at least show a little respect. Because I think there's some great Pinot that come out of California. Paul Hobbs does a really nice one. Uh, off the top of my head, I'm, I'm seeing a picture of one that I really like quite a bit. Um, uh, Raj Parr has a one. Sandy wines are really good. Good Pinots coming out of California. Um, Santa Lucia Highlands, things like that. Anyway, let's see what we get on the nose. So this has that nice, like, kind of sarsaparilla, dark cherries, big time. A little perfumed. I feel like I'm getting perfumed dark cherries. A little bit of bark coming through. Just a hint of tobacco. So you're getting a little of that nice savory and fruit element on the nose. I like that a lot. Let's see what we get on the palate. Yeah, very perfume. Almost like a little cannabis coming through on the nose. Like you walk, just walked by a group of people, which happens a lot now in Washington State, that just got done smoking weed. You know, just that lingering smell. Getting just a touch of that. 
let's see what we get on the pallet. If you want to bash California Pinot Noir, don't try this one because this is excellent. Once again, I see that nice lighter touch on the, on the, on the palate. You get really good dark cherry notes with that kind of root beer element coming through and that bark. Good acidity. It, it definitely wouldn't, it is not even close to mouth puckering, but that acidity keeps everything in check. You kind of get it on the backside. It freshens it up a little bit. Yeah, right underneath, lying under that dark, that dark cherry fruit and that little bit of root beer, you get the bark. You get the tobacco. You get that kind of earthy element underneath the fruit, which is really cool. I'm even getting a little bit, just a touch, it's not a prominent part of this wine, but just a touch of Asian spice coming through right on the backside. This is a well-made Pinot Noir. I, I'm telling you right now, this is a very good Pinot Noir. Um, this will find a home in King's Market where I work because I think, well, both of these, because they're very impressive. I'm impressed actually with both of them for different reasons, but nice job of doing a Pinot. No Syrah on this baby. At least I hope not. The color is just right for a Pinot. Gotta give it another whirl. No nice balance, just a touch of grip on the backside, maybe a little bit of leather type grip on the back end. Excellent job. Excellent job. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go A A minus on this wine. It's an excellent Pinot. The price is good. You know, if you can get it for 25 bucks, this is definitely better than a lot of wines I've tasted, Pinots that are much more expensive. So nice job, Virginia Dare Wines out of Geyserville. Nice job, Mr. Coppola, for putting that together. Um, thanks for watching. Hook me up on Twitter at Stan the Wine Man. Hook me up on Facebook. It's got my name. Um, check out my blogs, uh, the Seattle PI, Blue Collar Wine Guy, and StanTheWineMan.com. You keep watching, and I'll keep helping you spend your wine dollars wisely.